Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Hosea 6 verse 1 to 3. Come and let us return to the Lord for he has torn but he will heal us. He has stricken but he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise up, raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain. Um, and then the last line talks about how he will rain on us like the um, like the spring rain on, on the earth, right? So this has been a really bizarre morning. I um, tried to upload this very scripture about an hour ago. And for some reason, things just switched off of my phone. It just completely disappeared. Literally some files off my phone that have to do with these daily shares just completely disappeared. And that to me is exciting because it goes to show just how much spiritual warfare there is, even in simple things that you wouldn't even think are spiritual warfare. Very simple person like myself talking about God, talking about how God wants his people back. And the enemy starts pulling silly stunts here uh, here and there. Not to mention last night I had to go to bed about 6 p.m. Whatever uh, your your time, um, uh, whatever your sort of your time zone is, going to bed at 6 p.m. is just crazy, isn't it? It's too early. But I was that tired. I was that exhausted. I literally, my throat felt like it had been... Uh, all I could imagine were like, you know, paper cuts. If you've had a paper cut, it fe basically felt like my throat had hundreds of paper cuts on it. That's how. And then suddenly this morning, it felt perfectly fine. I feel fine right now. Of course, I have to be careful and I have to keep warm and whatever you were just sort of towards the end of spring where in this part of the world where I am and we're heading fully into summer now. And so some days are warmer, uh, some days are colder than others. And so I suppose for me, the warning is just just keep warm. Don't get too excited about this coming summer. Right. Anyway, that's by the by. So this scripture, this passage. Um, is basically if you if you read I'm on a journey of the uh, prophets the books of the prophets in the Bible um, and I listen to them through audio because I just find that so much easier um, and uh, most of the prophets most of the prophecies in the books of the prophets are just God lamenting and crying for his people to return to him and <clears throat> they're basically God saying look I have loved Israel so much I have loved you so much I've done everything for you I took you from slavery uh, I took care of you you know they had they had a, a, a you know physical encounters with god right um but god laments the way that they were then quick to uh, revert back to and uh, you know to not ancestral but just to um you know worship of other gods that there's nothing that break that that upsets god more than worshiping other gods it's an insult to him especially given what he's done these prophecies were before the times of jesus now you imagine now in this day and age if we if we worship other gods after god has sacrificed his only son there's literally nothing else he can do He's, he's, he's paid the price. There's nothing more. There's no bigger sacrifice than the son of God who is in himself sinless, but still took the penalty of us sinners by, you know, going down. And, and when you've been, uh, I've been rescued from generational curses. When you've been rescued from generational curses, you start to understand exactly what Jesus did. Because Jesus died on the cross, those curses are nullified, but you have to actively walk in that understanding and walk in that light. You have to walk in the light of God. The reality of God's kingdom cannot manifest in your life if you're not walking in his light. That means walking in his truth, walking in his word, praying his word, meditating on his word. Uh, living by his word governed by his word and yes yes sometimes walking with God can feel like you're getting left behind it can feel like everybody else who's doing their own thing are making so much more progress the Bible says there's a way that seems there's a way that seems good unto a man but the end thereof is death what you see people do now literally and I'm, this is not so you can watch and say oh they're going to get what's coming to them no but what you see people do now if it's outside of the guidance of god literally it's only a matter of time i speak as someone who's done this as someone who's experienced this so i'm not judging anyone i'm just saying <clears throat> outside of god's counsel I don't know about other people. It just didn't work for me. I have to speak about what I know and what I've experienced, right? But at the end of the day, guys, all God wants are his people back, right? He wants his people back. And the painful thing about this, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Guess who's holding that knowledge back from them? 
it's the very same devil the very same devil who told adam and who told eve that if you eat of this fruit you'll know everything but now that we know everything, he wants to hold back some of the knowledge. No, if we're going to know everything, let us know everything. Let us know God for who he is. Let us know the devil for who he is. But that's not how the kingdom of darkness works. They promote themselves and make themselves look good and make themselves look like they, they you know, people can gain more from them than if they follow God. And unfortunately, people through difficulty and hardship tend to fall for that lie that if you remember jesus tried the the devil tried to tempt jesus by telling him if you worship me i'll give you all this wealth that's pretty much what he says to people all the time and people fall for that he doesn't say it directly that way he just lures people into his kingdom in different ways and of course unfortunately some people are born into that kingdom because their parents were already bowing to that kingdom so these things are generational there's no doubt about it but look at what this this verse the scripture says it says come let us oh it's, it's turned into this different mode i can't read it as it is sorry bear with me but i have to emphasize that in all of the prophecies god is constantly lamenting and talking and and talking about how the children of israel in spite of all that is done for them they lust after other gods they literally chase after other gods they are attracted they are more attracted to other gods I, I have to wonder and think what attracts people to other gods because the peacefulness you experience when you're walking with God, the, just the joy you experience from walking with God. I, I honestly, I don't understand how anyone can choose the other side. Again, I could never try to speak for other people. I speak for myself. Having experienced cases from the kingdom of darkness, I know what it means to be delivered and to be saved, right? Um, but unfortunately, people are falling for this lie left, right, and center. But God is saying, and, and in fact, no, this, this, this scripture here starts with the prophet himself saying, come on, let us return to God, you know? Yes, he's, he's punished us. It says, come, let us return to God. He has torn us, but he will heal us. So yes, even though we went through these generational cases as a family, God is healing us now um he has stricken but he he will bind us up you know and the bible says there's a verse that says happy is the is he whom god chastises uh, because that means he loves him that means he's his child god will chastise you have to be prepared when you're working with god that it's not going to be a one-sided relationship where god serves you no you're going to serve him that's the reality and yes sometimes that could mean being told off by god it could mean uh, being uh, scolded or being punished by god you will be chastised where you do wrong but then again that's what a good parent does so what else would you want right and then it says in verse 2 after two days he revives us on the third day he will raise us up and um I, I can't help but see the link here obviously this was a prophecy before jesus came i can't help but also see the link uh to three days being you know jesus died and then rose up on the third day um but but we are past that stage now we are here jesus has died there's so much more on offer for us there's no excuse not to come back to god really of course there's there is a hindrance which is the kingdom of darkness really does fight people from from going to god he does it's a reality that's why reading your bible can be difficult that's why uh, praying can be difficult that's why fasting can be difficult it's because you have um invisible beings fighting you and placing temptation before you and running thoughts through your mind yours is to cast it all down and to stay focused on the course start off with short sessions of prayer and fasting and gradually build yourself up to longer and longer ones right um it says, let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. You you know, God needs to be pursued. You're not going to, even the way he speaks is in symbols. You, you have to have that heart that wants to understand who God is. You have to pursue him. Let us pursue the knowledge of God. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain. God's ways, you know, God is, God is predictable in a sense, in the sense that his ways, he's very set in his ways. He doesn't change. He is who he is. What you saw happen when you saw some people in the Bible repent and God forgive them. That's exactly what he'll do for you. You can definitely predict what's going to happen. You can predict that if I go on this prayer and fasting and and renounce all uh, idol worship from my family. God will forgive me and God will rebuild me. You know what's going to happen. But you also need to understand that you do have an enemy that's going to try to stop you. So the difficulty is not God trying to stop you from approaching him. No, it's the entities of darkness that try to stop you from reaching God. You have that understanding and understand that God really wants you back. Um, but you do have a contender that tries to stop you from going back to God, which means you need to be more determined. That doesn't mean stop. That means be more determined. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.